What's going on, fans of The Batman? We are back again talking theories, news, and having a discussion about The Batman Part 2. So hit the like button if you are vengeance, and let's dive in. So today I wanted to talk about a few different rumors and updates that have come out in the past couple of weeks that have me really excited. The first one is that Dick Grayson's Robin is going to be featured in The Batman Part 2. The second is basically just further confirmation of Clayface, but what that's going to really look like in the movie. And then also I wanted to feature a couple of comments comments that you guys left on some past videos that I found really interesting, so we'll spend a little bit of time on those. But before we start, just because it seemed like you guys had a fun time with it last time, I wanted to put up another riddle for you guys to solve in honor of our friend the Riddler. So I'll put it on screen, you guys think about it, and then leave your answer down in the comments and I'll let you know if you got it right. The riddle is, I can be cracked, made, told, and played. What am I? Once again, let me know down in the comments, but okay. So a recent post from My Time to Shine Hello on X has stated that they know that Robin, aka Dick Grayson, is in part two. And so obviously a lot of this hinges on us trusting them. I've seen My Time to Shine be right and wrong, so I'm gonna take this with a grain of salt. But for the sake of this video, let's assume that this is happening. And you know, I'm a bit on edge with this. I think it really comes down to trusting Matt Reeves and Peter Craig and the brilliance that is the Batman. There's a reason why we haven't seen Robin on screen theatrically in a long time, and that's because it's really hard. Nolan alluded to him at the very end of Dark Knight Rises, but it's not like that was a full-fledged Robin, like Batman and Robin, freaking Chris O'Donnell. And apparently there's been some cool stuff on TV. I did not watch Titans. Let me know in the comments if you think I should, but I do like Brenton Thwaites. He's a really good actor. He was in Mike Flanagan's Oculus, and uh, if you haven't seen that movie, go watch it. But I'm just really interested to see how they could incorporate a young Robin into this. Robert Pattinson said during a panel via Collider that he has to be 13. That's the only way I'll accept it. No, I love death in the family and stuff, but I think it'd be so cool. Also, people are so scared of it, but it's kind of exciting. I think it would be a really fun addition. And that's a very interesting prospect. Such a young kid being added to the mix would certainly add some tension. The grounded reality of having a 13 year old kid in a life or death situation is wild. I also think that it would only be right that it is Dick Grayson. He was Batman's first Robin. And so if you're gonna introduce one, have it be him. Batman the Brave and the Bold is also incorporating Robin, but that's gonna be Damian Wayne, and if you know the characters, there's a bit of a difference. One of them is psychotic. <laughs> but I think that there's a lot that you could do with the backstory. Honestly, you don't have to change it though. The original is probably fine. You could bring in the flying Graysons and then tie in the mob killing off his parents. And obviously being a traumatized orphan, Bruce connects with him really well. We've already seen that heart and that care from Bruce when he's standing in the doorway at the crime scene for Mayor Don Mitchell Jr and he sees that young boy who just lost his father. It could work very well. There's just a lot there to explore and to adapt. And I think sometimes for me personally, it's just hard for me to separate Dick Grayson from Nightwing. That's really where his story takes off. And with a hero like Batman, with such a serious and dark tone, it's just weird picturing Robin and like a sidekick. My head just makes it look like this. But if they could make it less silly, obviously, and really tap into the emotional undertones of Batman literally taking someone under his wing, it could work. I think you really have to key in and spend a lot of time on that relationship. What makes this kid stand apart from the rest? Why is Bruce taking him in and showing him all of his secrets? Why does he trust this kid? Because the stronger the relationship you have with someone, the harder the pain when it goes south. And we really see Bruce start to understand this in that scene in the hospital with Alfred. And so it's hard to imagine that he really wants to dive into bringing somebody into his family and having somebody else become a part of his life. I don't know. But speaking of things going south, you know, if you really wanted to get dark with this movie, an interesting direction to take could be taking a bit of the Jason Todd storyline and having the Joker kill this Robin and exploring how Bruce handles even more loss. And again, I, I know that's dark. Obviously, that's one of the darkest stories lines in Batman history, but if this truly is a dark and gritty crime saga, I could see us going there. I don't think that Matt Reeves is afraid to. But the main thing is, 
we haven't had Robin in a long time. So it's really exciting that this is a possibility. And if he is in part two, is he going to be in part three? Or we're going to see that relationship grow? Are there going to be other members of the Bat family that come into the fold? Who knows? There's a ton to speculate about. So leave any questions or theories down below. I'd love to kind of dive into that discussion with you guys. But now let's move on to another character that I've actually already talked about a bit in a previous video, and that is Clayface. And the reason I want to talk about this is that it's pretty much confirmed that Clayface is going to be a, if not the, main villain in the Batman Part 2. And in my previous video, I chatted mainly about what it could look like and if they'll go the Basil Carlo route, which is really the original Clayface, and it could be fun. We could have this classic murder mystery going on. But there have been so many different versions and iterations of this character that there's just a ton of directions that they could go. And so I've been researching and diving into the different versions of Clayface and kind of what the appeal would be for Matt Reeves and Peter Craig as they write this script and what backstory they could adapt well. For instance, somebody I was looking into is the Matt Hagen run, which is a bit more fantastical. And I've talked about how in the past, I don't think Matt Reeves is really aiming for that, but I looked into it and he falls into some sort of pool in a cave and it's filled with some sort of protoplasm. Gotta be careful where you fall. And that's how he gets his powers. But he's very just kind of random. And he kind of just fills in that space as the glob, malleable, crazy, clay face villain. There's not a whole lot to him. But then I kept looking and I came across Preston Payne's clay face. And if you're familiar with the story, if you really think about it, this might be the best direction that they could go. Preston Payne was born with hyper pituitarism. Basically, and I looked all this up. I don't know this just like off the top of my head, but... The pituitary gland produces too much growth hormone in the feet, in the hands, and in the face. And so his feet and hands are super enlarged and his face gets all messed up and distorted. And now the story kind of takes a turn when he goes and he visits Matt Hagen's clay face in prison and then gets his blood and he turns into more of like an actual clay face. But if they're going to do it in part two, I think you could leave that part out and really just focus on this guy who's disfigured and he's isolated from society. He lives in an abandoned wax museum and talks to mannequins and is on some sort of a criminal spree, whether it be killings or something else. There's a lot that you could dive into as far as the horror side of things goes. And I just have this gut feeling that Matt Reeves is going to be leaning more in that direction as we get into part two and part three. We know that he's a fan of like David Fincher and part one was very Zodiac Killer inspired. So what if... Part two was more Seven inspired. I don't know. And we don't know if Clayface is even the main villain. But after reading up on it a little bit, it has me super interested. He's a crazy villain. But aside from that, I also wanted to mention just a rumor that came out earlier this year. And I really don't even know if it's still going to happen or if it was ever going to happen. But I just want to say if it did, I think it would be perfect. There were rumors that Gunn and DC had met with Mike Flanagan for a Clayface project. And if you're not familiar with Mike Flanagan... Uh, um, I'm going to rant really quick because he's responsible for two of the best seasons of television on Netflix. And if you haven't seen them, I need you to go watch them right now. The first is The Haunting of Hill House and the second is Midnight Mass. I've heavily debated doing some sort of video essay specifically on The Haunting of Hill House because the brilliance of it is just like it's astounding. It's horror, so be warned. But gosh, the character work. The camera work, there's an episode in Hill House that's pretty much one continuous shot. It's incredible, but the writing and the performances, it's all magic. But he's great, and there is this vibe between Mike Flanagan, Matt Reeves, and David Fincher that I'm just kind of obsessed with right now. And so since the Reevesverse is expanding, like we've been told that, and we're getting full spin-off series, I can't imagine how much depth somebody like Mike Flanagan could provide as an addition to the world building. And if we're going that direction with the character, he's just the guy for the job. I can't even imagine the horror that we would see. The Riddler was dark, but there's a side to Gotham that the comics have a way of breaking into that the movies have yet to really touch. So yeah, check out Mike Flanagan's other work. He's incredible. And then just imagine what a Clayface project would look like. Just... Ugh, it could be perfect. But okay, moving on, you know, I just want to say that I really enjoy going through your guys' comments. I really appreciate it when you guys reach out and post questions because it makes this channel feel more like a community, and that's what I'm trying to build. And so with that being said, I have a couple of comments that stuck out to me over the past few videos that I wanted to highlight here and kind of just talk about. And so the first one 
one comes to us from GhostMe1635, and they said, I agree about what you said about the Joker's role. The Batman 3 will be his movie. As for 2, though, they have to introduce Two-Face, but the main villain should be Hugo Strange. And this is the first time I've heard about Hugo Strange from anyone, and it could make a lot of sense to have him in there. He's one of Batman's oldest foes, and I think if he was in it, he would probably be a side character that just kind of pops up. He could also be pulling the strings of Clayface. That could be cool, kind of interchange him with maybe more of a Hush storyline. The guy is known for being an evil genius, and having someone around to match the intellect of Bruce could be a really fun challenge. Also, I've said this in past videos, but I agree about Two-Face. I think you introduce Harvey Dent in part two, and you have him slowly turn into Two-Face by the end of part two, setting him up to be a villain in part three. But there's so many different directions you could go with that character. It's insane. I don't even know how you would choose. Maybe you flip a coin? Okay. <laughs> but the next comment comes to us from Lewisberry4403. Hope to get Juan Carlo Esposito as Mr. Freeze and Jamie Campbell Bauer as Scarecrow. And all I have to say to this is yes, absolutely yes. I maybe haven't shown it too much on this channel just because there's so much content out there to make, but like my wife and I are massive Stranger Things fans and Vecna in season four freaking blew my mind. Like the Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger influence was phenomenal, but Jamie Campbell Bauer was so good. I'd seen him before in the Twilight movies. Yes, I watched those. But also he was Grindelwald in Harry Potter and man, he just, he gave such a good performance as Vecna. I'm so stoked to see him in season five and that whole finale. But mentioning him as Scarecrow and Dr. Crane, that's insane. That's like freaking, that's so perfect. That is such a good casting job. I would love to see it. And I saw that comment and I just thought you were absolutely spot on. So good on you. Maybe we'll make a whole theory breakdown video about just him specifically as Scarecrow because that could be a lot of fun. But yeah, guys, thanks again for tuning in. I love doing this series on the Batman. I'm just going to keep these videos coming as long as you guys like them. Like it's one of my favorite things to talk about. So I'll keep those going. Please let me know down in the comments, any questions, theories, speculations, like anything that you have related to the Batman part two. I'd love to use your comment in a future video and also just keep this discussion going as we move closer and closer to hopefully 2020. 25 when the Batman part two comes out. Also, I want to let you know, hit the like button. If you enjoyed this video, you can follow me on X at Jones vibes only. And remember to keep up the good vibes. <laughs>